Hey everyone, welcome back to The Long Haul. Today I have a very special guest, Dr. Peter Pelletier. Uh, he is a pathologist here at UF. A little bit about his training, he completed his MD at Rosalind Franklin University in Chicago. Originally an internist, he did his IM residency at Wright-Patterson Medical Center in Ohio, and then his pathology residency at Wilford Hall Medical Center in Texas. He also completed a fellowship in blood banking and transfusion medicine at Yale New Haven Hospital in Connecticut. First off, Dr. Pelletier, thank you so much for joining us and telling us a little bit more about uh, your specialty. You're welcome. Thanks for inviting me. Uh, so first question, uh, diving right in, uh, what is pathology as a specialty? Well, pathology as a specialty is a clinical science. Uh, we work with laboratory as well as histology. Uh, there's two versions of it, anatomic pathology as well as clinical pathology. Uh, the clinical pathology is the area that I am in and it involves microbiology, molecular uh, science, uh, HLA matching, blood banking, and uh, chemistry and hematology and coagulation. So it's wide and varied what's within clinical pathology. Anatomical pathology includes cytopathology, just looking at the cells and, and looking for pathology there, or histology, looking at tissues themselves, and then also forensic pathology falls in that realm. I see. How many years of training does it take to become a pathologist, and does it differ based on uh, which type of pathologist? Well, many programs are combined AP and CP, and when I was going through it, it was actually a five-year uh, residency, first year being clinical where you rotated uh, with the other services, whether they be surgery, pediatrics, uh, or internal medicine. Uh, since then, it's now a four-year for combined AP and CP, and, and then if you only do AP or CP, uh, then it's a two- or three-year program for each of those. I see. Um, are those considered subspecialties? The AP and CP are specialties onto themselves. Okay, I see. The subspecialties fall within that. So subspecialties for AP would include pediatric pathology, uh, also cytopathology. Uh, they also uh, gynecological pathology, bone marrow, uh, the, uh, many different hematopathology is like the bridge between AP and CP because they do they do both they do flow cytometry, but they also look at tissues of lymph nodes and bone marrow. I see. Um, I was looking at a specialty that dealt with apheresis treatment. If you could tell us a little bit about that. Sure. Apheresis is the, a Greek word to be take by force. Me being prior military, I, I have a, a liking for that procedure. And basically with apheresis, you use centrifugal force to separate out the different parts of the blood, whether it be plasma, platelets, white cells, or red cells. And depending on where the issue is for the illness that part you removed out and then you mix the remaining parts with albumin or saline and and re-give that back for sickle patients they need to have the red cells removed uh, to prevent either uh, strokes or uh, avascular necrosis of their bone marrow and such and then we remove out their red cells and then give them back red cells that don't have sickle other diseases like thrombocytopenic purpura, TTP, the issue is within the plasma. So we remove the plasma and then replace it with albumin or FFP. And, and, and on and on for other disease processes. I see, very cool. Um, is this something that any pathologist can do or does it require further training? It, the apheresis is within um, blood banking itself, uh, but yeah, other specialties also do uh, apheresis. At this institution, the benign hematologists do the adult apheresis and the pediatric nephrologists do the pediatric apheresis. So there's other specialties that do train to do this besides transfusion medicine. Okay, I see. And why did you choose to specialize in pathology? I know originally you were an internist, so I guess what drew you to switch to pathology? So before I even went to medical school, I was a medical technologist. So pathology seemed like the, the right place to go. But sometime during medical school, they said, I, 
you do too well with patients, you'd be wasting your efforts. So I went into internal medicine and while doing it, it still, it wasn't going to be a lifelong fit for me. So I worked my way back to my first love of pathology. Very cool. Um, what was, what is the most rewarding part of your job? You would say as a pathologist, as a pathologist, um, is working with other physicians. Um, there are blood bankers that go into the OR and the others that don't many transfusion medicine physicians are very good at telling the doctors, no, you can't transfuse that. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't tell them what else they can do. And the, and the surgeons and the anesthesiologists want to be able to do something. So I'm not afraid to put on scrubs, go into the OR, uh, assess the patients myself and tell the anesthesiologist what best blood products are for this particular situation. Uh, first, they're angry at me for going in there because they think I'm just going to tell them no. But after I've talked to them, they, they say, well, what's your name again? And, and then I get phone calls from them proactively uh, for help to take care of their patients. I see. With that same token, what is the most challenging part of your job? It, well, the challenging part of my job is, uh, again, the, 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 the physicians want to be able to work independently. Uh, you have to build a rapport with them to, uh, to, sh to let them know that you do know clinical medicine too. And me having prior internal medicine training lets them know that I can talk Dr. E's with the best of them. Uh, so I can fully assess the patient, not just answer the question they're asking, but answer the question they were meant to meant to ask for this particular situation. So uh, it's just it takes time to build rapport. And it, and another thing I've started was actually do uh, clinical rounds with some of the surgeons and the burn unit and the bone marrow transplant people because um, each of them have special needs and it lets me get in more contact with their fellows and residents up front. Uh, not in critical, stressful situations, but in more relaxed scenarios so that we can, we can build up that rapport. Gotcha. A little bit about the lifestyle of a pathologist, maybe I mean, like what the hours or if it's, if pathologists are usually on call on the weekends. Okay. So work probably 50, 60 hours a week. Uh, I like to come in early because the surgeons come in early and a lot of surgeries are starting at 7.30. So I'm usually here before 7.30 and such. Uh, and then call is usually at home call. I don't have to be here for that. Uh, given that this institution does a seize by other services, I don't have to cover the a seize service. So I don't have to come in for those emergent procedures. So it's a good balance between work and home life. Okay. How competitive is it nowadays to match into pathology? In to pathology, um, our pathology program here for residency gets filled every year. Uh, we have uh, 30 plus applicants that we actually interviewed. I think we interviewed 50 this year and there's only four slots. So that sh could give you an idea of how competitive it is. Oh, wow. uh, that sounds rough. <laughs> <laughs> um, a little bit about the typical compensation for a pathologist? Um, probably about 250 for, is probably the median range um, for, for a level of experience. Uh, you probably start a little less, 150 to 200,000 starting off. But uh, with years of experience, you, you get higher salaries. You're not gonna make the millions of dollars that the, the, a lot of the high uh, ed, end surgeons do. Yeah, a common misconception about pathology. Um, I don't understand the question. A common misconception. Oh, a common misconception yeah. about my specialty, internal medicine. All you need to know is if they bleed yellow, give them red. If they bleed red, give them yellow. That everybody can get O negative red cells or AB plasma. And um, so it's not as simple as all that. I get many times people ask me, you did a fellowship in that? And yes, I did a whole year fellowship in that. And if you do research, you get to do a two year fellowship in that. So there, there's a lot more to it than a lot of people think there is. Right. Uh, next question is, if you had the option to go back in time and change your specialty, uh, would you? I guess you did that once. Would you? <laughs> I'm, I, I'm happy with this choice now. Uh, what The Air Force trained me for 
transfusion medicine. And I'm lucky enough that now that I'm out, I don't have in the Air Force. They also trained me for the eight P and C P. So I was a general pathologist with transfusion medicine uh, leanings. Now here at this facility, I get to do just transfusion medicine. So uh, as far as I'm concerned, my my dream is complete here. <laughs> Sounds good. Thank you for your service, by the way. You're welcome. Last question for you, Doc, is what advice do you have for people studying to become a physician or a pathologist or any type of anything in healthcare? Um, re remain well-rounded. Um, learn the other aspects. Learn how uh, communication skills, writing skills. Um, patients aren't our only patients. Our colleagues are our, our clients also. So learn good communication skills. Medical schools will teach you the medicine part. You you need to learn the other soft aspects too. Right. Dr. Pelletier, thank you so much for taking the time and speaking to us. We learned a lot and we really appreciate you uh, coming on. You're welcome. Thank you.